Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Ryan Hicks. I'm coming to you from Dallas, Texas, here in my glass box as I've got sun coming everywhere. So I'm trying to adjust my light fixtures so that you can actually see my face. Um, but it's really good to be back with you guys. We had a couple of weeks off. There's been a lot uh, going on. Um, this is actually the 11th. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Tony. 11th springboard at home. Yeah, and also a new addition. We have Tony. Uh, <laughs> Facially on the call today. She's not just running behind the scenes, but uh, Tony, it's good to have you. I think we're going to hear from you. you here in just a second. But just a quick note on that. We've had a ton of really great leaders, and we've got another really awesome session for you today. Um, Franchisors.com. Go to the multimedia tab. You can see all of the past uh, episodes that we've done uh, right there. So be sure you're doing that. You stay plugged in. But as, as we uh, pl prepped and kind of planned this week, uh, we have the leaders of both Nine Round Kickboxing as well as Pet Supplies Plus, both brands that I personally love for, for Nine Round. Uh, it's not only a great place that you go to stay fit and healthy, active, and all the rest, and you have your community, but it's really about a mindset, right? It's, it's, it's a way of life. It's not just training uh, in the gym, but it's, it's something that helps you and you bring it out to, to the world and you bring it into your personal life and all of that. So we're, we'll formally introduce um, Shannon here in a second. And then also Pet Supplies Plus is a brand that I love. And we have their fearless CEO on the line as well. Um, that's a brand. I'm a dog uncle. I'm not actually a dog owner. So I've got a really good setup like that. I actually have a picture I'll show you. Or I had one. This is little Echo. Okay. And, and Echo likes to go to Pet Supplies Plus. She does not wear her mask. Um, but, but, and I've had COVID, so we're safe. Um, but anyways, it's a pleasure to have both of them on. We'll formally introduce them in a second. Before I turn it over, I think we're going to hear an update from Tony. Um, I'll make a quick observation. So a lot of you probably saw the, uh, the promotional, uh, some of the promotional images that went out for this, uh, this week's session. Uh, Mr. Lane Fisher, he is, mo I'm pretty sure everybody on the call knows him. There's probably a few that do not. Uh, he's franchise attorney. Uh, Fisher Zucker bears his name. Um, but as we're in the text group planning, like, hey, what should the title of this episode be? Lane, like, immediately responds back with these, like, witty names. Like, how did, like, where does he get this? And, uh, and so, so Lane can add to, to his, his title, as I told him on the call earlier today, Marketing Genius. Um, so we've got a fun session for you today. Um, Brad and Lane, I, I just want to make a quick comment on both of you guys, as we oftentimes refer to this as the franchise family, which it really is. Um, everybody on the call and everybody that watches this afterwards, you have no idea how much thought that goes into everything that they do. And, and they really care about bringing value to the community. And there's some new stuff um, that, that we'll probably announce, I don't know today or, or not, but it's just, I just wanna make a comment and say, I personally commend you guys. I know the whole community does because it's awesome, um, the platform that you've built and, and the things that you do for, for the community. So. Having that said, I'll turn it over to Tony. Uh, if we wanna do that first, quick update on Switchboard and we'll get a couple of other quick remarks and then we'll lead straight in. Sure, so super quick, um, our employment resource Switchboard, we do have uh, 40 jobs right now and over 120 resumes. So if you are looking to hire, you can reach out to me um, and I'll help you go through our database because it is extensive at this point. So if you have any questions with that, please just reach out to me. And if you know anyone who's hiring, just keep spreading the news and keep spreading the word. We appreciate it. Tony, what's your email? So people sure. can reach out. I will write it in the chat so it's easier to copy. Okay. Hard to spell sometimes. <laughs> yes, it is. Italian last name, I apologize. <laughs> All right, uh, Brad, do you want to give a just yeah. a uh, springboard yeah. update? Because we've been getting pepper with calls with folks that want to know what we're up to. And you know that we have told you week after week that we wanted to bring you a live event, but Brad, break the bad news down. <laughs> so unfortunately, we've been going through the whole Philadelphia slash Pennsylvania laws. And as of, uh, what is it, about 10 days, about a week ago, uh, Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. Is it just Philly or is it Pennsylvania? It's Philly right now. Basically, up to February 28th, there will be no groups of gatherings over 50 people. So, unfortunately, that has put a kibosh to Springboard. So, we are doing what we're, everyone else is doing. We've had to pivot. And we will be doing a virtual event on the same dates. And we'll pretty much go about just like it's a normal Springboard. 
you know, unfortunately, we'll miss out on a few of our wonderful parties and cocktail parties, but we'll do our best to make it a fun event. But most importantly, is we're going to bring you great speakers who really can tell you what they've experienced, like continuing what we've done with these webinars, but, uh, you know, helping to try to get the emerging franchisors as they go through this, you know, pivoting, going around and trying to really figure out how, as you know, I'll give you my personal opinion that we will have a vaccine by the end of the year for sure. And there's going to be a lot of opportunities in franchising. And just like every other time there's been a recession or a little bump in the road, franchisors figure it out. And entrepreneurs have the innate ability to figure out some great ideas that makes a wonderful business. And it's opportunities for everybody. So we're glad to be a part of it and help uh, these emerging franchisors as they find franchisees. The real estate's going to be, lit, lit, you know, we're trying to look at the, the little rainbow at the end of the tunnel. So we're excited about it. And our job as Springboard is to try to give you the best information from people who have gone through it and where their vision is for the future. I think that's a, that was actually very articulate, Brad. I, you took away a lot of my notes. I think it's not going to be the same old virtual event, but I, I, I hope it's not the same one that everybody else is doing. I'm looking at it as a huge opportunity to get folks like Chris and Shannon to immediately agree to participate in it because they can do it remotely and up the curve up on some of our um, speakers and some of our topics. And, and so we are looking at it as a huge opportunity, like uh, just, I don't know, Brad, if you said it, but we don't intend to charge franchisors to attend. Um, and so we would encourage as many people as can from your organization to attend. And we promise to deliver on what our mantra has been from the beginning is to bring you people that have actually done it. You know, the benefit we have from our client base and from the number of folks that we talk to is that we are getting a sense of who's getting their groove on and our job in terms of what we can bring together for the emerging franchise or community to the extent everybody's not re-emerging at the moment is that kind of assimilated data of what's working for folks. And so it's, uh, you can expect to see lots of that. Uh, to that end, I would say that if you are, um, you know, if you are making strides, if you have any success stories, any stories of encouragement that you're willing to share, um, you write me, write Tony, write Brad, any of us to uh, make sure that we, you know, figure out a way to, if your content's relevant to get you on the program. Um, you know, we're looking for franchisors that have been there and done that, as opposed to people telling anecdotal stories. So you can expect more of what you've seen in the past. Um, that's all I wanted to say, Rai. Um, I, I'm, again, grateful to our speakers today, but I'll let us get right down to business, Rai. Beautiful. Well, to, to formally introduce today's guest, I think we already have probably four or five times, but on the line we have Chris Rowland. He's the CEO uh, President and CEO of Pet Supplies Plus. Um, we, we did get to visit his office while we were on the summer tour. I think it was week five. We got to hang out with a bunch of pets, but Chris is an amazing leader and an awesome, awesome gentleman. We're pumped to have you guys uh, hear what he say. And then we also have Shannon Hudson. He's the founder and CEO of Nine Round Kickboxing. I think we visited him on day 20 or 22 or some, some odd while we are on the tour. And that was a, a great time. And uh, Shannon's growing even through uh, what, what we're seeing. I saw on LinkedIn some international stuff going on. So there's a lot of good stuff going on. But gentlemen, both of you, thank you for being here. And welcome to Springboard at Home. Thanks for having us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks. The pleasure's ours. So just to kick it off, um, a little bit of backstory. Um, Chris, do you want to share a little bit about who you are and your backstory, just to give the audience some context of, of who, we're, who we're speaking with here? Well, um, obviously, Chris Rowland, you may notice an accent originally from Canada, but spent uh, the last 22 years, I guess, down in the States, uh, 15 at PetSmart, and then uh, the last seven or eight uh, here at PSP. So I've been fortunate to be in a, a passion industry, a fun industry for the last uh, 23 years. Uh, left PetSmart uh, for a number of reasons, but one of the biggest was um, you know, big company, harder to connect with people. And when I came to PSP, at the time, we were buying back franchise and becoming more of a corporate, uh, the, the strategy was to be a corporate growth company. And uh, when I became CEO, we decided to change the strategy and focus on franchising, primarily because I believe that there's a lot of things we could do with individual owners, frankly, better than what I was able to do at PetSmart and our competitors at Petco and others. So 
to me, bringing that local touch to our stores with the, you know, the, the behind the scenes machinery, if you will, and the efficiencies of a large company seemed like a win. And uh, almost 300 or so stores later, we're up to stores 500 now, uh, it seems to be working. So the model just keeps growing and the excitement around the brand keeps growing. So happy to be here and still having a great time in PET 23 years later. Beautiful. Shannon, what about you and a quick thumbnail on your story? Yes, sir. Um, Nine Round was started in 2008. We're 12 years old, so we're, we're a tween. Um, <laughs> we have uh, 750 locations across 19 countries. So um, myself personally, I grew up in martial arts, ended up getting in the kickboxing world, boxing world, love to fight. I, I won a world title as a professional in Canada, Chris. Nice. There you go. Uh, in fact, got my nose broke. If you look, see how crooked my nose is. Okay. <laughs> I was going to mention that. Yeah, I knew. I knew you were <laughs> smart. Alec. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but um, I I found that it's more fun to give than to receive on the uh, kickboxing world. I'm telling you. So in 2008, uh, we, I said, you know what, Heather? Heather's my wife, and I said, let's start a 30 minute workout, no class time, circuit training model. Uh, take out the get the hit part because it really, really, really stinks. And we created nine round on a shoestring budget and uh, we just grew from there and uh, super proud. Our company is uh, debt free. We, uh, you know, we haven't, we didn't lay off anyone during the, the pandemic. And, uh, you know, we just, when the tide goes back, you see who's not wearing the, wearing the swimsuit, right? So we luckily had our swimsuit on all the way and uh, we're powering forward, fighting forward. So that's where we are. Hey, Shannon, t talk a little bit about you. You, also, you authored a book and I love the book, but yeah. tell us what that book was and just give us a quick blurb on why you wrote it and what sure. it is. Um, it's a great business card. I tell you that book, right? I give it out, right? Um, it's called Zero to 100. You can receive it on Amazon, Kindle. It's a very quick read. You could read it in an hour sitting probably. It's just the trials and tribulations of going from nothing to 100 locations because it took me five years to get there. But then from uh, 100 to 200 took one year. So it just shows the, the power of compounding, right? And the, pow and, and the struggles at the beginning, because it's hard. It's so hard uh, starting a business and starting a brand, right? Starting a franchise system is so hard. So I just wanted to share that story with everybody because hopefully it'll give them some hope and some uh, encouragement that yes, it's hard, but I can do it. So that's, that's where it is. Yeah, love love the book. Highly recommend it. Um, would like to have both of you as we set some context and also have you kind of just speak generally about the last few months. We've been through a lot. Um, it's been a roller coaster. You've been navigating a lot of tough tough waters. So um, first, just kind of a quick state of the union looking back over the past few months, and then secondly, uh, just to give the context, how many locations do you have? You've already mentioned that, but how, how many are open just so we understand the footprint as we go dive in and talk about technology and a bunch of other different topics. Uh, Chris, we'll start with you, State of the Union, and then what the current kind of footprint looks like with locations open. Well, you mentioned it, uh, the last few months have certainly been uh, different, unusual, unscripted, and uh, uh, interesting times. So primarily our, our first and, and biggest uh, focus has been trying to keep our team teams and team leaders safe uh, in our buildings. We, unlike some businesses, we've, we've remained open because we were an essential retailer. Uh, and while that's good, it, it has its own unique challenges. So uh, we made a few calculated bets early on when we started seeing COVID in other countries, thinking it might come to the U.S. and uh, invested pretty heavily in inventory and did some things to set our stores and our distribution set up for uh, success. Uh, that obviously paid off because what we didn't really expect was when COVID hit, everybody would go out and start, we all knew, heard the news of them buying toilet paper and paper towels, but they also bought dog food and cat food and litter. So we did get hit really early on and uh, sold a whole lot of stuff really quickly. And then, you know, saw a little bit of a decline probably in the second month. And then since then, it's just been month after month of increasing, uh, increasing performance and increasing sales. So what's different in our industry is when people are stuck at home, and I saw this back uh, during 9-11, when 
when 9-11 happened, everybody stopped traveling. They, you know, they were worried about what's going to happen in the country. The first thing they did is they went out and got pets and they started taking care of their pets. Well, that's exactly what's happened with COVID. So uh, we're fortunate to be in an industry that has a lot of passion and emotion around it. Uh, and it does cause people to, when you have crises like we're facing, causes people to want to nest, stay home and be comfortable at home. So they have gone out and gotten dogs and cats and small animals and birds. And that certainly helped to uh, drive our business. So through it all, uh, we didn't have one day where the stores have been closed. Uh, I'm very thankful that our, our, all of our team members have been safe throughout COVID. Uh, we got on the PPE and everything very, very fast and made sure our stores were in very good shape and protected. And that uh, really did keep our team members for the most part uh, safe and healthy. So uh, no store closed. Uh, we had a few call offs here and there with, with people that were a little bit nervous of being in the public, but that's kind of dampened down a bit. And now people have kind of gotten used to working with it. So uh, 500 stores open and, and through this, we continue to open new stores. So we'll open 35 stores this year in the middle of COVID as well. Chris, you, as you heard before, they like to make fun of me about my two boys because I'll talk <laughs> about, but as, as Ryan definitely knows is I have a little daughter who's a cockapoo. And yep. who's, been, who's been a customer, and I know you know this, who's been a customer of Pet Supplies Plus for a long, long, long time, ever since she was born. And, you know, as, a, as, as Roxy is our, is our little daughter, we like to call her, you know, you guys had wrote, you know, obviously we stocked up on food. Sherry worried more about Roxy getting her food than toilet paper and paper <laughs> towels. We figured that with everything else we can deal with, but Roxy had to have her food. But you guys yeah. were able to adapt while you went online. And I know we're going to discuss this later, but we would get to the location and the, they would call the order. When you call in, you, the food gets put in your trunk and you leave. And you guys did a really effective job because there was never a question. Roxy was going to get her food come or hell high water. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And that's, that's the story we get from a lot of our neighbors. And, and I actually... Through, the, through this COVID pandemic, what we've heard from a lot of neighbors is thank you for being there, thank you for being open, thank you for being reliable. Uh, it's really all been positive. The social media comments have been positive. Um, we've, we certainly have tried to do the right thing from day one for both our neighbors and our team members, and it seems to have paid off, so. The only, thing we miss, the, the only thing Roxy missed is walking around your store, because that was one of her favorite things to do. Right. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm feverishly trying to find a picture of Roxy, but I can't find one. Roxy's <laughs> great, but sh hey, Shannon, t obviously in your in your business environment with closures and restrictions, it's different uh, because people have to come in to work out um, outside of the pivots that you've made, which we'll talk about. But just give us a quick thumbnail on on the state of the union from your perspective and what the open footprint looks like today and all the rest. Yeah, I just got the numbers this morning, actually. Um, we're right at 80% open. So we have 600 locations open around the world, but you know, another 150 shut down. And a big part of that's Canada and California, right? Um, California, 30 more counties shut down. I, and they didn't shut down, they just said you can't do indoor workouts. So what do we do? Outdoor workouts, right? So um, it's, and, and that's what's so frustrating for owners. And I try to give them an, an analogy, any franchisors listening, if you can get personal with these owners and let them know you're human, that's the way to go. I tell them, if this is a 12 round world title bout, we're in round four right now. I, th I think personally, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't know when the vaccine's coming like bad Brad knows. But, but, but I'm preparing my, the system that, listen, we're in round four, guys, of a 12-rounder. You got you to gotta, you gotta have some stamina, some mental toughness here, and we got to pivot. And I know we use the word pivot a lot, but as another word I, I think really helps is reset. This is a great time for franchisees and franchisors to look at some of their policies in the past that maybe didn't work very well or in franchisees pricing wise maybe this deal didn't work well and i and it's a great time to kind of reset and and recharge everything and get excited again about your brand i know internally we've we're resetting a lot of things the way we coach franchisees uh the compliance branding i think i think instead of yes pivot absolutely you have to 
but let's also use the word reset. It's a great time to reset. So to answer your question, we're about 80% open and uh, we're in the fourth round of a hell of a fight. Hell of a fight. <laughs> I like the I like the framing of of the reset. I, I try to it's just like you guys told me as we were talking yesterday. Uh, you don't you hate the term franchise development. It's franchise sales. So I'm going to do my best to do that. But if we're looking at technology as you reset and as you innovate and as you have to adapt, Chris, um, talk us through a little bit about how you've navigated those waters. I know that you went from primarily an in-store purchase experience and you had to quickly. Uh, changed some things and you stayed open, but that's still, you had consumer behaviors were changing and people were reluctant and scared and you had to meet the consumer where they're at. So talk us through what that looked like for you guys. Yeah, so we were in the process of uh, developing our e-commerce, our online presence and uh, testing curbside and hadn't quite got to delivery when all this happened. Um, and, and actually that journey probably took 18 months. What, what's interesting is when you have time, uh, you can overthink the hell out of everything and think things can take forever to develop. So what happened, uh, COVID was a bit of a blessing in disguise because it caused us to say, you know, it's probably good enough. Neighbors want to order pet food. They're not here to, you know, spend hours and hours online. So while we might overthink how it looks and feels and, you know, how you navigate it and so on and so forth, at the end of the day, the neighbor just want to be able to buy pet food in, in a safe environment. So we uh, very, very quickly rolled out uh, buy online, pick up in store across all 500 stores. It immediately was a huge success. We went from being 1% online sales to at the, at the peak of COVID, 17% of our sales were online. So wow. um, that all happened in a matter of a few weeks. So we, we rolled out curbside to all stores. We have 500 stores now, and we have uh, 435 on delivery. That has gone extremely well. Unlike some of our competitors that you know, we all heard during the, the peak of COVID, you know, Amazon was four or five days late. Chewy was four or five days late in deliveries. We were still delivering our pet food and our orders within 24 hours. So we actually got it. Not only did we get it rolled out, but the teams just did a phenomenal job of executing the rollout as well. So um, we're now getting ready to roll out our second version of our website, which will include uh, subscription and some other things, but what really happened is it caused us to say, it's okay to go really, really fast and know that while you might not love everything about what you're developing, if your neighbors love the brand and they're loyal to the brand, you know, they just want to be able to transact with you. And at the end of the day, that's what ha that's all that mattered in our loyalty, our, our uh, satisfaction scores online, we're in the high 90s. So people were saying, you know, I don't know what, what you guys don't like about it, but it works great. So it, it, was, it was a great learning lesson. And uh, the takeaway for us is we've always done things fairly quickly, certainly compared to our competitors. We're very nimble and very fast, but uh, we're even quicker now. I think that's phenomenal advice because it is very easy to overthink and there's a lot of moving parts, um, but excellent advice. And by the way, here's Roxy. There you go. Just to, ra Roxy. to, just to round that out. I texted Sherry and, and Zach and said, I need one stat. Yeah. You know, it's funny. If I go I to an airport that. and I have my PSP shirt on, uh, inevitably someone is going to come up and pull out their smartphone and start showing pictures of their dog. And that's like a 10 minute ordeal because there's usually about a hundred of them to go through. <laughs> I've done Chris, it twice. And, Chris, and you're 100% right about it. I, I'm sure my wife couldn't even tell you one thing about your online presence or about when I say presence, about whatever was there. All she knows is she can order her food and get it picked up. Right. That's all. And that's all. All that's all. We. That's all she cared about. There was no yep. okay. Whatever it is, Roxy's been there since she was born. And as long <laughs> as Roxy gets the same food she's at, it's one less aggravation in our house. <laughs> I mean, Agreed. is Roxy's uh, favorite movie, Rocky? Exactly. <laughs> so you can make it, give, give Shannon a little love. Well, speaking, speaking, speaking of some, some Rocky action, Shannon, what about you guys? Uh, how have you navigated the waters? What have you kind of had to do, been forced to do? And, and how have you created value during all this? Yeah, Chris, I think you're right. I think speed is more important than perfect execution, right? And... It, it, you know, and that's naturally how I am. In fact, one of the chapters in my book, and I'm not trying to plug the book by no means. You don't get rich on books, by the way. I'll tell you that. Um, I've sold like three, but uh, I but, bought two of them. But, yo, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
And his um, mother bought the other one, I'm sure. Exactly, yeah. My <laughs> wife did. But, but one of the chapters was ready, fire, aim, right? You got to just, you got to just do, you don't have to get it perfect, you just got to get it going, right? So, you know, we dabbled, we talked about around the round table about online workouts for a very long time. I mean, we just, you know, and we watch Peloton and we watch Beachbody and we watch Fight Camp and, you know, and I'm like, eh. but now that this is here, I'm like, we're in, we have to do this because there's three types that we learn. There's three types of customers. There's the customer that wants to go to a physical gym. They want to get in their car or, and go to a, a location, have a trainer. And they want, they want that experience. But then you have the customer that doesn't want to leave the house. They don't want to put on makeup, right? The ladies, they don't want to get out of their pajamas and they want to work out at the house. Then you have the hybrid customer. So that's the third type. So now our brand, we have to appeal to all three types of customers, the hybrid, the engine, the only at home. And we were within a week, it was put full 30 minute, nine round trainer follow along workouts on our member portal that every member has and they can, they can get to. So we, we turned that around really fast and we're very proud of that. Uh, we had to do some IT work, of course, and get our franchise system up to speed on that. Um, we were in front of the franchisees every day, even. I was talking to our advisory council every single day. So pivoting, resetting, throwing it out there before it's perfect. We've had to do all of those things. So the lessons, the takeaways are, like Chris said, you don't have to be perfect. You just got to get it going. And we learned there's three types of customers, and we have to appeal to all three if we're going to be relevant in this space. Great news for Brad. He doesn't have to put his makeup on now. No, um, you look great, Brad. <laughs> yeah. But uh, looking at kind of, and I think both of you have alluded to it, but as you look at the kind of the long-term outlook of life with COVID, life after COVID, what opportunities do you see? How do you gain market share and a competitive edge as we're moving forward? What, what, is, what is your outlook on that? Uh, we'll start uh, back over to you, Chris. Well, I think there's a number of things. I think uh, first and foremost, if you stay true to your brand and you didn't try to change your message, I think that helps. I know I've been bombarded personally with emails from CEOs of companies that I might have shopped at once and what I thought their company stood for you know, the letter that came from the CEO just felt very corporate, felt, felt, you know, a little bit, you know, too much pandering. And we made, we, we decided early on, look, we sell dog food. We like to have fun. We like people to enjoy uh, being a pet parent. And we're not going to try to be who we aren't. With that said, you know, our team members love what they do. When you come in the store, the environment's going to look a little different. There's going to be masks. There's going to be, you know, we're going to be cleaning and we're going to do a, but We've always done carryouts, and the difference is we said, hey, if you don't want to touch the bag of dog food, that's cool. We're still going to offer it. Um, so we made some subtle tweaks. The communications that we sent out for marketing were very much on brand, continued in the same, you know, lighthearted feel that we always have. Uh, we didn't, you know, we backed off on some things and said, this isn't the time to be out there promoting like crazy. This is the time to say, hey, to Brad's point, we sell dog food. We know why we're here. And guess what? Well, all this craziness is going on and you're running to Walmart and Costco and being disappointed. At the end of the day, when you want a, you know, a quick, easy in and out service, PSP still has product in stock. We still have clean stores. We still have team members with big smile. You may not be able to see it behind the mask. Um, and our messaging to the neighbors through email was basically, it was basically that. It was, you know, we're gonna stay with you through this. We're gonna be reliable through this. And as a result, I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing our sales continue to increase month after month after month. You know, we're fortunate that we did some things early on and didn't, you know, we didn't ask, beg for forgiveness later. We went out and spent a lot of money on inventory and loaded up our DCs and said, if this happens and people go crazy, we want to be there for them. And if it doesn't work, you know what, we'll sell it down eventually and things will be fine. You know, we forced stuff out to our franchisees to say, hey, here's some stuff to help keep your team members safe. Here's some things we're doing just to keep you focused on what you do best, which is take care of that neighbor in the stores. And behind the scenes, the folks at the corporate office, we call it Pet Central, were busy. You know, their day job was buying inventory for buying dog bones. And their night job became, let's go buy masks and shields and all these other things. And it, 
you know, I don't want to say we had fun with it, but it's amazing how a crisis can cause people to come together and really, you do feel really good about the things you're doing for your stores and your stores feel really good that, you know what, you didn't let us down. When, when the neighbors were desperate, when the neighbors were, you know, blowing up our stores, somebody was on the end of the phone and somebody was thinking a week in advance of what we might need and what might be happening. And so I, 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 I feel very, very good that uh, our neighbors recognize that and are now coming back in more than they ever have. That's beautiful. I love the, the fact that you just stay true to the brand. I receive personally so many emails, like you mentioned, a company I might have done business with once and you said it the other day, you start reading the top lines. Like I can already tell you every single thing that they're about to tell me and it feels fake. And I think you guys have done a phenomenal job of being on message and, and just uh, doing it in an empathetic way. Um, Shannon, what about, what about you guys? You can talk about the, the mark from a marketing message standpoint, I think is, is where kind of the track that we went down. How have you approached kind of the messaging? I know that for, in your instance, it was a little tougher um, from, from the perspective of you, I think 90% membership based and whenever the, the, the club is closed, that presents some challenges, but how have you messaged from a marketing perspective and what is, what is that looking like today as we're kind of in rebound in 80% of the locations? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and to Chris's point, it's, it, it's so great to hear you say you, you know who you are and you stay in that lane, right? And, and the fitness world is so easy to veer off and try to be, have something for everybody, but we, but you can't, you, you won't do anything well, you know? So we know who we are, we stay in that lane. We know nine round is not for everybody, totally get that. Um, but we think everybody should try it. We think everybody should try it. Um, as far as the marketing, we had to quickly create tools for our franchisees to market to their people. So we had to get the videographer going and, and actors going and, and talk about, you know, we modeled some of the uh, videos after like Southwest Airlines you know, the tone behind it and the, hey, we're here and we're wearing masks and we taped off the stations and we're eight feet apart and we're, um, you know, uh, shutting down and mopping twice a day and spray cleaning twice, you know. So we had to create these tools. So we had to go to work very quickly on giving the franchisees just the tools to message to their community because they don't have the resources we have, right? And they don't know, they don't, they don't know exactly how to say it in the proper way. So we went very fast and hard using our advisory council to help us with messaging, uh, created the COVID-19 banner on our website, telling the entire plan on there, showing video on there, showing how we're doing the social distancing, uh, encouraging franchisees, to, even if your store's closed, still continue to keep revenue, giving them the online workouts that we have. We did not want them to shut the revenue off because once you do that, if you don't get landlord help, I mean, you're, you're done. I mean, the, the bills keep coming, right? So we had to keep some type of revenue coming in. Some franchisees lowered the cost just for online service. Some kept it full price. Heck, we even had members say, I want to pay full price no matter what. They're just so grateful. And I'm telling you, we have a cult-like following. You know, the root word of culture is cult, by the way. So mm -hmm. we have a cult-like following in our brand. And some people wanted to keep, just, just keep the fee going. But we encourage franchise owners to keep the money going because if they didn't, it would be very hard to come out of it. Uh, some locations didn't listen. And, hey, we have lost a few locations. I'll be honest with you. Um, but, you know, we get, I feel good laying my head down and we gave them the tools, right? We gave them the tools. We listen to the franchisees. We survey them every two weeks. I mean, we're just trying to listen and, and help them as much as we can. So that's what we've done lately. And uh, I'm very proud of the team. Shannon, you know, like you mentioned the word reset before. Yeah. It gets, you know, in that whole space, it's becoming a reset. You never know when it's going to be. Right. You know, all of a sudden you turn around and everything's great. It's open in California. All of a sudden you find out, okay, we're shutting down at 12. How is your team handling that? It could be, like you said, California's 30 counties. Well, you have something in a different county and it could be two miles away. Yeah. You know, we have some states that never closed. You know, I think like Nebraska and out in the Midwest, I mean, some of those never closed down. So, so you're right. It's all over the board. So we have to give a scenario for every franchisee. Right. And I have to get the, 
co- our franchise business coach is geared up to handle every type of situation, right? But the main thing is bringing in income. They have to continue to bring in income no matter where they are in the reopening phase. It, it's, been, it's been a cluster, a cluster F, and F is for friend, a cluster of friend <laughs> who helped us. Uh, uh, but, um, but yeah, that's how we've done it. It's been a, it's been a challenge. I, I told you guys yesterday, I've never worked so hard in my life. I mean, the past four months to, to and, and bring in as little income. And, you know, we gave royalty really, we're still giving royalty really. The friend, to the system. And we're not back 100% yet. I mean, our stores are 1,500 square feet. We cannot have, some locations can't have four members, four or five members, it, at a time. So, you know, we're but not back to 100%. Our franchisees are prob- probably going to have royalty relief the rest of the year. I, you know, I mean, they just have to. And we have to give as much help as we possibly can. So, I forgot. I think it. there's one thing that's happened during this COVID that is is something you can at least count on and that is uh, whatever you think is logical is probably not going to happen and if you're waiting for the government to uh, help you through this it's not going to happen and if you think whatever uh, rules come down from the government makes sense that's not going to happen and if you know what you can choose to uh, have it drive you insane you can just say look this is what I expect governments don't run businesses so Frankly, most of the stuff that came down made no sense when they were saying, you know, there's no masks available. My supply chain team found masks, no problem. When they said there wasn't disinfectant available, they found disinfectant. So all of the things that we were led to believe, you know, this this is right or this is wrong or this is going to happen or this isn't going to happen. Frankly, almost none of it came came to fruition and we just didn't let it bother us. We said, all we can do is what we can do. And the biggest change for us was think about this. We are 25 year old passionate people who run our stores and do a great job. Now suddenly we're asking that same 25 year old to understand a virus and how it can impact his or her team, be a part time uh, psychiatrist to make sure your team members aren't, you know, freaking out that they're going to get sick and die. And then oh, by the way, the government's changing the rules every day and they have to be on top of their local. The thing that was very interesting to me, Federal government can say one thing, the state government can override it. And what was news to us until they showed up at a few of our stores, the municipal government, which most cases we didn't even know who the hell they were, apparently they can do their own thing too. So in, in a matter of 24 hours, the directions that you're given could change three times. And yeah. what we quickly realized is you can't let it bog you down. You can't let it consume you. All you have to do continue to take care of the neighbors, continue to take care of your team members, and we'll get through it. Hey, Chris, my wife's so funny. She's like, I thought this was the, I thought this was the United States of America. Why are they all <laughs> yeah. different? I'm like, oh I, I have a perfect meme because I'm a, I'm a visual guy. But this, you can't see it because I have a light. It shows a, a, a street sign that says, <laughs> if government advice on coronavirus was a road sign. And you've got this thing that's saying turn left, turn right, this, that. Exactly. But it's it's very true, and that's excellent advice. All you can do is take care of your people the best that you can. Chris, you mentioned something earlier, uh, and one of the first kind of top of the house is the first thing that you want to do is take care of the safety of your people. And as you look at the home office, what is the what is your HQ headquarters office policy look like? Have you brought people back, and how are you managing that? Yeah, so that was something that we jumped on very early. It was interesting because we we happen to be in a fortunate position that in January and actually as far back as November and December, we've been talking about testing work from home. But like any company, there was a lot of drama around, oh my God, are the tools going to work? And you know, how are you going to manage productivity and so on and so forth? So we said, you know what? We're going to crawl, walk, run. Everything we do is a test pilot role, crawl, walk, run. And we said, we'll test it in a small group, see how it happens. Well, then, of course, COVID hit. And they hadn't shut anything down in Michigan, but we did, We decided, well, three weeks before the state really did anything, let's go ahead and shut the office because people were already starting to, you know, you hear it in the hallways, you hear it by the water cooler. Oh, my God, you know, COVID, it might get sick. Um, so we said, let's, we wanted to test this anyway. The difference is we're all in. We're jumping in the deep end of the pool. We sent everybody home basically the end of February. And... Uh, you know what, I could not be more proud of the team of how they all stepped up. Uh, not only did they do a great job, and not only has the productivity not gone backwards, 
but I actually got more positive comments from our stores around the support. Now, some of that frankly could be because everybody was stuck at home with their phone and you know, I don't even know what a work day is anymore because it's whenever you're awake, but uh, it ended up working out great. So then what we started saying is, look, if within a month of that, of that test, we said, if anybody wants to stay home permanently, you've already proven you can do your job, go for it. So we started with around 30% of the team wanted to stay home permanently. And we kept going back to him saying, are you sure? And then he went to 45, then it went to 50. Well, now we're up to about 70% of the team is gonna work from home permanently. Um, and you know what, if it works better for their family, it works better for their lifestyle. And as long as they continue to be passionate and support our stores, that's all that matters. So it's worked out incredibly well. Uh, we basically said for the 30%, they're gonna come back. Uh, if you wanna start coming in the office, go for it. You don't have to. Uh, and until the governor decides when the schools are back in, uh, frankly, we're not going to ask them to come back because we know the number one thing on their mind is, you know, how do I take care of my kids? And they don't need an extra stress point in their life. So until your kids are off to school, the office is going to stay closed or is it's a come in if you like basis. Shannon, before we go to you, we got a, we got a question uh, from the audience. Candice Couture, shout out to Candice. How are you? Um, she asked, for Chris, how do the online sales profits, because obviously you spun up the online, how do online sales profits pull through to franchisees? Yeah, so our model is a little different than uh, a lot of our competitors and others. So we went, um, because we're a franchise uh, organization, all sales are done at the store level. So we don't send anything from our distribution center. So the sale is done at the store, the fulfillment is done at the store, and the delivery is done at the store. Now, the good news is in terms of the economics, our radius, our most about 80% of our sales are within five miles of our stores. So it's, it holds true for the online sales as well. The difference is our online sales average transactions are actually higher than when people come into the stores. So it's still a profitable venture. That was the biggest thing we were concerned about. I mean, anybody who knows anything about our big online competitors like Chewy, they sell a whole lot of dog food and they lose a whole lot of money. Um, our franchisees with each online purchase or sale, because they're fulfilling it in their store, because they're fulfilling the delivery themselves, in some cases through a car that they purchased or a third party delivery company, uh, the profit margin is still pretty good. Beautiful. Shannon, back to the topic of the, the headquarters, the office, what is your policy and what are you guys uh, doing and continue to do? Um, well, we're super lean. We have just under 50 in our home office, right? So, and I think there's three people here today. So first thing we did is we um, put an AB schedule out, AB. So, you know, you, this week you would do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, next week you'll do Tuesday, Thursday. But then my wife, Heather and I were like, you know what? it's working great and some people are feeling kind of squeezy about coming in at all so just work from if you want to come in come in on your a b but if you want to work from home work from home and of course we've always kind of had that that attitude with our executives with our high level people um, but we just did it across the board now we do have a distribution center a d a dc as you call it there chris uh that we fulfill everything to the stores boxing gloves bags everything and you can't work from home on that. So you have to be in there pick packing and shipping. So those guys just uh, work in AB and do the best they can stay away from each other in that, in that, in that warehouse. But um, I've, I've, I'm an old school guy. I like to move, manage by movement. I don't know if you heard of that philosophy. I like to walk around and hear what the, what's happening. I'll jump on the call with a franchisee with a franchise business going to talk and I'll get on the phone there in that wave out. I mean, I just like to hear the energy of the office. I love that. I love the energy. I love people and stuff happening, right? And when I'm here for a while, I, I really battled, I think, with some depression. I mean, no one was here. Stores are closed. Revenue's down. I mean, I just wanted to go jump off a cliff. My wife's like, look, you got to get a hold of yourself here, you know. Um, so, but now I've embraced it better. Uh, it's been hard, but... Uh, and our, and our people love working from home. We had to give some Zoom etiquette tips. Mm -hmm. and, and you franchisors, you might want to do that. We had a few. Wear uh, pants. 
people get, yeah, we had a few people being a little too casual on these lines. And I'm like, man, come on now. We got we to gotta sharpen up here. So uh, besides that, you know, we let them come in if they want, if they don't, no problem. And um, we do our team meetings all together on the, on the Zoom with all these people on the screen. It used to be in this big room. We'd grab everybody in. It's just this big, loud, once a month, awesome thing. But, um, but so far, so good. And, and you have to be able to change. And then we use the word pivot a lot. We have to use, but technology is so great. Imagine if we did, imagine 30 years ago, my wife and I talk about this all the time. 30 years ago, if we didn't have this platform, we couldn't, I, I don't know how we would meet. I mean, with a pandemic, I don't know, but I, we're blessed for Zoom and Skype and all of those and Google Meets. So um, we're, we're handling it okay. I'm, I'm not depressed anymore. I'm happy. <laughs> for, for those that don't know, uh, his wife is Heather and she's the, is it chief operating officer? Is that correct? She is okay. co-founder. Yeah. She, I'm, I'm the big visionary and she has to implement, right? And uh, so she, her and I, she gets mad at me a lot, but you know, but, but she's amazing. Um, follow up, Chris, to the answer for Candace. She says, thank you. I was one of the frustrated Chewy customers, so I can appreciate and commend how you handled the pandemic. Um, you got your so, new customer, Chris. There you there go. You go. Uh, that oh. was actually one of the benefits. We never had uh, our, our delivery was within 24 hours, and it did make a huge difference. Yeah. So, so always selling. I like that. And that transition yep. us transitions us into franchise sales. I want to ask about that. Not franchise development. I struck that from my <laughs> vocabulary when you both like attack me <laughs> when I, I said development. But I what, what, had to be corrected by my quote unquote development guys. So I'm I'm just I'm now reverted to calling them development. So there you go. You're gonna screw me up. <laughs> That's right. funny. Right, so as it relates to franchise development, franchise sales, what is that looking like for you guys? Are you moving full steam ahead and do you have movement? What do you expect this year and, and beyond? Um, Chris, we'll start with you. Yeah, we last year was a record year for us. We sold 93 franchises. Uh, this year we'll do almost as many, uh, just a little, little short of that in all likelihood right now. Uh, we, we were worried, obviously, because a big part of our, our meet the team days are actually over a dinner the night before and then a full day the next day. They're very long and they're long on purpose because we want to make sure everybody who buys into our brand knows literally everything about it. We, we, we show you exactly how the soup is made because we know nobody's going to go out and copy it anyway because it, it just takes way too much work. So by the time they're done meet the team day, it's all about is this the right culture? Do you have the right passion for it? because you already know we're going to take care of you. Um, you just got to deliver the experience in the store. We had to switch to uh, virtual meetings and we thought this is never going to work. I mean, just, we can't do the same experience. Um, it's been great. I mean, we've had uh, more. What, what, what's changed is in the past when we could get people to fly into Detroit and do spend the day with us, our, our close rates were very high, 70, 80%. Uh, now with the virtual, because you're not having that commitment of getting on the plane and flying across the country, we are seeing more people attend and the close rates are a little lower. So in the end, you end up in basically in the same spot. So we think we'll have, uh, you know, in the 70s sold this year. And by the end of this year, we'll have over 200 stores sold, but not open. So at some point in the opening uh, process. So uh, it's been great. And Shannon, I know that you have a different name for your discovery days. I, I like how you yeah. frame that. I like how you all, you have your new, your names for everything. Yeah, man. You have your own style, but what is it looking like for you on this franchise sales side? Um, yeah, you know what, it's full steam ahead. I mean, and we're not spending as much as we, as we were before, by no means. I mean, when this pandemic started, we stopped, uh, we stopped it all. And then we just put a little bit back in a couple months later and now we're back up to about 50% of what we were spending for online advertising. But uh, we, we call it approval day, uh, not discovery day. I mean, they should have discovered us a long time ago, right? In that sales process. So the approval day, they're approving us and we're approving, making sure it's just a great marriage, right? So uh, we like that verbiage, but um, you know, we're, we, I just signed a new deal the other day. We opened six new locations last month. And when I sign these new deals, I, I go, I go to my wife, I say, people still buy this stuff. Holy moly. Right. I'm like, wow. You know, I'm so thankful. I'm like, holy smokes. I'm talking full, not a resale. This is full brand new. Um, and, and that's the type of operator I like because they see opportunity. 
they see our brand doing new things. They see us pivoting and helping our franchisees. They see that we are going to get in the, in the online space and I'm going to have the franchisees share in that. I'm going to, I'm going to have it where the franchise owners can have a member and downsell them if they'd start to cancel to an online deal or upsell them and add the online to it. I mean, we're going to do some amazing things. We're building a whole new studio for, for filming. I mean, man, I'm just so jacked up. I mean, this is the greatest opportunity. I'm telling you people listening now, this is the greatest opportunity that's ever hit my lifetime. And I'm 40 years old. It's like the car being developed again. It's like, it's like, holy smoke. This, it's all how you look at it and, and people listening, you got to just reset, get chart, get charged up. Listen to Chris. Chris has got some great stuff there. Um, I'm telling you uh, the meet the team days, uh, the, the approval days, I mean, keep the energy up, but you can do it. Uh, but franchise sales is full steam ahead. Uh, we're teeing up 2020 is the tee up for 2021 reset surround myself with the right people i'm hiring a new vp of ops right now i'm hiring a new videographer right now i'm hiring another paralegal to go under my attorney right now it's tee up time everybody we're gonna tee it up so 2021 man we're gonna just boom and we're gonna freaking kill it so use this time to reset shannon i agree, I agree with your optimism because we're gonna see let's be honest some jobs are never gonna come back Right. And that's what's going to happen. The unemployment, I know they're talking about their Congress is negotiating right now where maybe it might be up to 70% of your salary. It could be from $600 a month to two, three, four hundred $400 a month. So people are going to have to replace income. And there's no better place than franchising. And, and with what Chris is doing and what you're doing, it's the optimism and shows that it's going to be, you know, unfortunately for a lot of people out there, Real estate is going to be way more available right now. Totally. And yeah. so there's all kinds of opportunities. And if, if you two don't have the optimism, no one in your organization will. And I, okay. I, you know, I think it's great because I agree with both of you. Hey, hey, Brad, we started this company in 2008. You guys know what happened in 2008? And franchise sales we were just booming. And then the economy got better. Guess what? Franchise sales slowed down. I'm like, what's going on? So I'm telling you, franchising is an amazing growth, amazing business mechanism. I'm just so glad it's not illegal. I'm like, I wake up every day, I'm like, holy smoke, this is legal? This is amazing, you know? But it is true. You can look at any crisis that you've, in the last hundred years, and there are winners and there are losers. It's as simple as that. It's an unfortunate fact of life. Uh, you said it, Brad, there's going to be businesses that will go out. There will be people that will lose jobs. And there's going to be other businesses that are just going to have, have seen record success. So uh, we just happen to be lucky, both Shannon and I, that we're in passion brands and uh, they're not going away. And that's, that's, that's what people love. So, um, I mean, this has been fantastic. I hate to even interrupt anybody. I'm just a little curious because I agree with Shannon and we've had some prior discussions, guys, about the opportunity. And I just wonder if um, you could speak to sort of how you've organized your resale efforts. I mean, anticipating there may be some stores, some stores that come back, they may in the, be in the wrong hands, Shannon, in your position in terms of like making those stores available and organizing it so people can find operating locations. And I know, Chris, you have tons of, I don't know if what your plans are for the company stores, whether any of those are available for immediate, you know, operation and sale and whether that helps or doesn't help. But just, if you could just both respond to that for a minute, I'd be curious. Chris, you wanna go, sir? Yeah. Um, so the short answer is yes, there's lots of opportunities. We, we have a unique system in that a lot of our franchisees have been in it for 25 years and getting near that point where they're saying, okay, 25 years, I probably need to think about golfing and enjoying my life or what have you. So that's, that, that really hasn't changed much. Uh, you did mention it that uh, we have corporate stores and we have started to sell some of those off our, our long-term plans. Uh, we're opening, call it, we'll open 50 or so stores next year. We might open two or three corporate. Uh, ideally, I want to start to get to less than 10% will be corporate store long term. So, yes, we will continue to sell off corporate stores over the next uh, three to five years. And we are basically not opening corporate stores unless there's a, an amazing opportunity with real estate that we just can't turn down. And even then, uh, we're still looking for that best, you know, that, uh, that, perfect franchisee to put in it because we believe, you know, you, you match the right franchisee with the right real estate, 
and you've got you know an absolute gold mine so that that's not going to change and uh i don't know that COVID has changed much i think there were some owners frankly because our business did do very well through COVID. i think there's some owners that were on the bubble before COVID that we haven't heard much from them now because i think they're sitting back going damn this is a pretty good little business <laughs> good that's great that's what i'd like to hear great so yeah. re resales um lane you know, when I first started franchising in this world, I'm still new to the franchise world. 12, I mean, 12 years, I knew nothing, right? I, feel, I get on the phone with you guys and some of these calls, I'm like, God, I, man, I don't know much, you know? And I'm just so thankful I can learn. I learned so much. I get more out of these, by the way, than probably anybody listening. Um, so thank you for that. Um, but when I first started franchising, you know, you had no resales, right? It was like, and then when you get a system, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred locations, you, you start having resales and then they get more and more. And then you're like, holy smoke, it's a whole department. I, I, I got to develop processes for this. And, and, and how do I vet these people? And then the store has got to be modernized and up to the standards. And how do I, how do we do that and give the person time? So, so we had to develop a department for that. And, uh, you know, we've got, I've got some seriously good franchise sales dogs out there. When I call them dogs, they're just killers. They're just freaking killers. Man. <laughs> you guys have met some of them, Jeff Matthews and uh, Darko. They're just killers, man. I mean, you could do it. You could throw anything at them. They could sell it. I mean, I'm uh, Chris, don't get any ideas. Okay. I know you're trying to say, who's that guy? I, I, I know what you're thinking. So yeah, they're gone Canadian. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, but, but yeah, so resale. So yes, so we've had to take locations that are going to fail and find a new owner. And, and guess where we find that owner usually, that new owner, a member. It's a yeah. member that just loves it. Again, like Chris says it so well, a passion brand. That's exactly what we are. We're freaking passionate. And we have, I have some owners, I know they're, they're not making a lot of money, but God, they love it. They would do anything for the brand. They don't care. You know, it's not about the money. It's about the just cause. You heard Simon Sinek say it at the last IFE, the just cause. We want a just cause. What better just cause than help your health and fitness through pandemic? Health, 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 right? And what better to provide jobs and a business for your community? Holy smoke. It, 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 so that purpose is so good. And so resales, yes, have become a beast. But yes, we're learning from them. Uh, we develop systems and processes for them, and we're trying to bring in the right people to uh, with the passion, and we usually get them from the members. Love it. We have uh, two minutes left here. Just a quick feedback from the audience. Don uh, Abamadi says, love the authenticity of the panel. Thank you so much for sharing. This is exactly the philosophy of Springboard and what you stand for as a group. So, guys, thank you so much for sharing. Um, the last question, Lane, I'll let you ask the last question. Go All for right, it. I'm just going to text you. Don't forget to ask the, <laughs> the closing question. So, you know, our family consists of many folks who are emerging and re-emerging. That may be, describe everybody in the universe today, and I, I actually hope it does. Um, but I wonder if you have any um, tidbit of advice to offer somebody who's an emerging franchisor, knowing what got you to today in this webinar, uh, if you could just offer some closing advice to those folks. Chris, want to go first? So I would say, just be authentic. Um, if you try to if you try to not be who you are, people can see through it. First of all, you're probably not that good an actor, and you can't keep it up anyway. So I think whether it's you or whether it's your whole team, it starts with uh, you have to find authentic team members who truly love the brand and love what they're doing. Uh, you know, my motto is I can't. You know, if you're an accountant. Um, I can't, if you hate accounting, I'm never going to make you love being an accountant at PSP. But if you, if you love being an accountant, I want you to absolutely enjoy working with PSP. I want you to enjoy our culture. I want you to enjoy the fact that, that we are uh, authentic. We're not going to do anything that we think is not in our franchisee's best interest or our neighbor's best interest or our team member's best interest. And I think if you do that, um, when times are rough, like with COVID, your team will rally around you. If, if they understand that, that we're all in this for the right reasons, your franchisees, your team members, whoever they are, when you don't get it perfect or spot on, they're going to cut you some breaks and say, hey, I know your heart's in the right place. You guys are authentic. You're doing everything you can. You'll figure this out. And that's, you know, from day one, what we've, we've tried to do. We don't, you know, even though we use a PR company to help us with the outside, internal communications it's just all about you know you'll 
they'll see me get on these videos in a parking lot and I'll just speak off the top of my head. Sometimes it's probably not the right things to be saying, but you know what? Good, bad, or indifferent, they're going to know exactly what I think. And uh, I'm going to be straightforward and honest with them. Whether it's a tough conversation or a pat on the back, I just think that's important. Shannon, before you go uh, with your advice, and thank you for that, Chris, before you give your advice, you just got another book sale. So you're up to four. Uh, Tony, <laughs> Tony, Tony um, I'll botch the last name if I say the last name. So sorry, Tony. But Tony says, great job. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the shares. By the way, I bought your book. But anyways, parting words of advice for emerging franchisors. I'll give you the best advice I ever heard. And, and it was the same advice I got for my golf, sing, golf swing. It was take two weeks off, then quit. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, um, no, here's what you have to do. You have to fall in emerging franchise, <laughs> emerging franchisors. Listen, you have to fall in love with learning. You have to be around as many smarter people like this. The, you guys, you sprint, you springboard guys. You got to be around as many of them as you can. Even if you can't afford to get there, you got to go to the event. You got to get on the thing. You a good Friday night for me is a glass of wine with my wife and some FDDs and study. <laughs> You're an exciting guy. Study, baby. I mean, I read every F. My wife goes, what are you doing? I'm reading uh, Gold's Gyms, FDD. What are you doing? I'm reading uh, Marco's Pizza, FDD. She said, why do you do? Well, I, I learn. I can At least read you're the, having a glass of wine with it. I can read the financials. <laughs> I can see uh, their programs, how they structure royalty. I, I mean, I've learned so much. So you emerging guys, you got you to gotta crack open the FDDs. You got to get to all the events. You got to fall in love with just learning this business. That's the secret. You don't have to worry about people stealing your sales guys. You might have to worry about your wife being stolen instead. <laughs> come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on, Chris. <laughs> Those are fighting words. Chris, man, I got a knee left hook, bro. Come on. <laughs> I love we, we told everybody, beware of the southpaw. That was uh, that was. I am a southpaw. <laughs> I am a southpaw. I'm a lefty. And the good news, guys, is Springboard is we, we're doing online this year. So we love, like I said, this kind of puts us to the end. But most importantly, we, we love, we, number one, we thank you for all your wonderful advice. And also, you know, Springboard is going to be online this year. And it's going to be, we love for as many people to go and with, uh, with what everyone's going through in this industry. Lynn and I decided, you know, there was going to be no cost to try to get as many people available to really join in. And as I told Lane, I don't care if we have 30 for one company. It's just that all we can help the franchise space. This has been amazing right. and it's been fun to participate in. Even I tried not to derail or interrupt with too many questions because it was going just the way a family conversation goes. And I keep describing and referring to the franchise family, but this is like a table, a virtual table, but it's, everybody can almost finish each other's sentences, even if they haven't seen each other or don't spend thousands of hours together. I am very grateful for you, your time today, your time on short notice and your willingness to share uh, all that you have. It's the comments are still rolling through. My phone's been lighting up. People are really enjoying this. I really appreciate it. And I think you should know that you're, you know, you're giving back something that people really find worthwhile. We already know that Shannon Hudson has been creeping the videos and I know we see it really, I, I say that with all love. A lot of people have been, I'm learning. a lot of people have been going to the videos trying to, you know, pick up the content, which they think is great content. So anyway, I appreciate you. I know we got to let our folks go. Uh, Ryan, any closing words, Tony? No, thank you guys and cheers. Tony, anything? No, just Shannon, if you're looking for those uh, people, I'll just, re I'll help you with that on Switchboard. <laughs> Great. Gotcha. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Keep it up. Stay strong. Round four. <laughs> there you go. Stick